children. Okay, let's ignore that. All right, so we'll take a break in a few minutes. We're just going to talk about how, have, have any of you set up Montessori shelves in your homes? Do you have any Montessori setups in your home? Anybody? You do? Not yet, okay. Those of you who are trying some Montessori, where are you getting your information from? The internet, okay, which is a great social media, okay. It's a great way to get information. I have to tell you though, okay, I follow a lot of uh, social media accounts, a lot of them, some are good, few are good, many of them, many, many of them, it's just not Montessori, to be honest. They are writing that they are doing Montessori stuff. It could not be further from Montessori than, you know, what they're doing. So, you know, as a, as a person following, it all looks very beautiful. It's very attractive, but it's not necessarily Montessori, you know. So do try to do your own research before you carry out activities. It, it does not adhere with anything that that really came from and then what happens it's not it's not a bad thing you're not doing anything damaging but what's happening is that it just turns out to be an activity the amazing benefits that we hope to have the long-lasting ones we don't get to see them in that case okay so how do we want to set up a Montessori home she calls this environment that we set up a prepared environment not because it is just prepared you know with materials on the shelves but because it is prepared to meet all the needs of the child to meet all of their sensitive periods to meet the fact that they have this mind that's like a sponge to meet the fact that they need movement that they need concrete experiences that they need order it's got everything it is the most perfect setting for a child to develop in so you want to also have a prepared environment in your home even if it's just one shelf okay you not possible of course to have all of this at home but even if it's just one or two shelves you can have a look at some of these and see there are only one or two shelves but they're very beautiful everything is very neat and organized things you'll see a lot of natural stuff not plastic toys and things like that things that you could buy from the pasar you know Simple things are at a child's level. So the first thing you want to do when you go home is to declutter, all right? All of us, all of us have way too many things for our children. If your child is old enough, they can declutter with you, okay? If your child is too young, you will need to, to, to declutter. So in order to create that order, have a couple of boxes and decide this is going to be the stuff we give away this is going to be the stuff we put into storage this is going to be the stuff we use now okay if your child like i said can go through this with you it's fun to do together you can put some things away and rotate them like you saw you don't need too many things at one time when the child has used those few and they've you know you can see they're getting a little bit bored of it put those away and take some more out okay so that's the first thing you need to do is to declutter. Then you need to create an area that is child size. Why child size? So that the child can have independence. So that there's never this point where the child says, Mom, carry this for me. Mommy, can you bring this down for me? Mommy, I can't reach that. He should be able to get to what he wants whenever he wants it. Okay? Does not have to be super expensive. Keep these things in mind. It should feel cozy. It should be simple, it should be beautifully arranged, and it should be natural materials. There are baskets, there are, you know, simple wooden shelves. It's not that you have to go shopping to Ikea or something to set it up, okay? You can do it with things that you have at home, okay? So create that workspace. I know a lot of us live in small homes, but find an area in your child's room. Find an area in your living room, not next to the TV or something, okay, where you can set up, you know, 8 or 12 materials for them. 
Uh, you want to think about labeling things in your environment. So it's not necessarily for the children to have to read, but it's good for them to see the written word. So you can stick something that here that says shelf, something here that says scales, something, you know, aqua machine, aqua, or whatever it is, okay? Stick little labels. With your child, take little pieces of paper and tell them, what is this? Do you know what this is? And it doesn't matter which language you are working in. If you're working in Bahasa, you can do it in Bahasa. So what is this? This is a shelf. Okay, I'm going to write down shelf. Shelf. Now, can you help me stick it? and go to the shelf and let them help you to label the items. We're not necessarily going to ask them, go around and read it for me. But the more they see it, when it comes time for them to read and write, it will be easier because they have seen it. It also, of course, teaches them new vocabulary. Do you have questions so far? Okay. Um, make sure you have stools in your house. It's not, we haven't built our homes from scratch, so our bathrooms are not children's level and our kitchens are not, you know, things are not to the children's level. So we have to get stools. You get really nice stools here in Carrefour and, uh, you know, with rubber on the top so it's anti-slip and stuff like that. Make sure you have one in your bathroom. Make sure you have one in your kitchen for the simple things that the child can rinse his cup, brush his teeth, wash his hands. It should not have to be the point where, uh, you know, I, of course my children are grown now, but I have uh, nephews and nieces and they come over and I always have a stool still so that they never feel that they have to ask the nanny to help and carry them to do something as simple as washing your hands. Okay, so make sure that's just such a small thing you can do, right? Okay, uh, have a place for everything. Make sure there's a place for everything, whether it's your kitchen staff or the children's. Uh, you know, even when you're setting up your shelves, have simple pieces of paper, okay? Just trays of paper, a, bo a box of pencils. You know, when we do this at home, our pencils, our color pencils will be in the cupboard. Our glue will be somewhere else. Our paper is somewhere else. And then the child says, okay, let's do an art activity. Okay, let me get everything. And you're here and you're here and you're here. Now let's sit down. But it should be there, free for him to do whenever he wants. Not difficult. Photocopy some papers of coloring if you like and just keep it there. So whenever the child wants to color with a box of pencils. Mm -hmm. um, give children time for dressing up. Choose clothes. Okay, it does take them time. They don't do a perfect job. But how will they learn if we don't give them the opportunity? We are always doing it for them or the nanny is always doing it for them. Let them come to the cupboard. Okay, well, today we're going to the mall. What would you like to wear? So he may choose yellow pants with an orange shirt. It may look funny, but he will feel pride in the clothes he wears. My nephew right now, he's four years old. Everything is about superheroes for him. So whenever we go out, he wants to wear things that are superhero. But my brother and sister-in-law are fine with that because that he feels so good he goes out with a sense of confidence that nothing can replace okay so by us say, saying no you have to wear a button-down t-shirt and he's feeling itchy and gatal and all that right he's not happy let him be happy right that's the most important thing so give them leave that time say okay let's go and give them that time to dress and whenever you feel they're having difficulty, don't just jump in and say, okay, let me do that for you. Okay, we're getting late, let's do this. Would you like some help? Can I help you? If you need help, let me know, I'm here. So let them know you're there, but don't jump in with the quick fix, okay? Um, make sure that you have child-sized cleaning tools. Children love to sweep. Do you see our brooms over there? Children love to sweep. I know we don't like to do those kind of things, but for them it's really fun. They may be sweeping nothing, they will may achieve nothing, but they enjoy the process and it's really good development for them. Um, my nephew, once he came over uh, many years ago, he must have been about, he was not even two years old, and he was playing in the house and he found that broom that we used to sweep the beds, you know? <clears throat> And he started to sweep all the beds and I live in a small apartment and he swept the sofas and he was just doing his own thing and the, the nanny came and she said, no, no, no. And I said, listen, leave him. Just let him do what he wants. And then when he finished sweeping all the beds, he, he bent down and he picked up the bed cover 
like this and he started sweeping underneath the bed. Now he's 18 months. Nobody taught him that. It's not like his mother said, one day you may have to sweep in your auntie's house, let me teach you. No, obviously going back to the absorbent mind, he's seen it and his mind has just taken it in. And so he knew that I have to do that. Like I said, but he was enjoying himself. He was happy, he wasn't tired. For 45 minutes, he just did sweeping. Okay, before that he brought his own toys, he played with one, he threw it, he played with another, he threw it, he played with a third, he threw it. But with this, he stuck with it for 45 minutes. So have child size cleaning tools, the dust pan, buy a broom and cut it. That's what I did for my own kids. I bought a broom and I told my driver to cut it for me and make it short. And they enjoy that okay and it helps them to become independent and understand also that this is our environment all of us have to look after it okay um, have art on the walls get nice pictures just like we decorate our own home right you get paintings and you put it on the wall print something nice pictures have a little frame and stick it on the walls so it feels cozy like a home um, keep music accessible all of us have speakers and uh, Bluetooth and this and that right so make sure that the child if he wants to listen to music can listen to music himself okay uh, low shelves of course and have an analog clock a clock like this but somewhere at the child's level this is a teaching classroom so it's there but in your homes it would be somewhere where the children can see it on the wall or a table clock you know, because we are constantly uh, teaching children about passage of time. Again, that's something you would cover in the diploma course. Any questions? Okay. Uh, try to set up an area where children can prepare their own meals. It's not too difficult, okay? It's even something as simple as taking cereal and pouring milk, spreading jam on some bread, okay? Have this, it, it you saw the children, the kind of things they were doing in the video, right? So little by little, not saying, saying go home and change everything in one day, but bit by bit, adapt your home, adapt your lifestyle to support the Montessori way of living and learning. At the end, very important, you've got to let children help you to tidy up, okay? They have to learn that there's a process. If we do this, to complete this, we have to tidy up as well. That's one of the things in schools we have the hardest time with children. They don't want to put their stuff away. They're happy to take all of this and use it, but getting them to send it back to the shelves at the beginning of the year takes us a lot of time because they're used to having people do it for them, right? So at home as well, you've got to get them into that cycle to complete an activity.